Hi, I'm Karen I'm from Tour Studios and I'm going to make a quick asteroid dodging game using the Shoot'em Up kit. So I'll start going to create a new project. I'm going to start with an empty project for this one. So it needs a game, it needs a name. So not very imaginative, but it's a name. Yeah, I've also made it a 2D game. So these are all the editors for this simple game. All I'm going to use is the level editor. So this is a completely blank level to start with. And well, I'm going to start by going to the level settings and switching off the in-game music. So I could change it to something different, but for doing a demonstration, I'm just going to switch it off. And then I'm going to put some asteroids in to start with. So this is an NPC generator. So if I pick the asteroid, and put a few points along the top, then one of these will be picked at random for each one generated. You can use the mouse wheel to scroll out make the line a bit longer and then either escape or stop placing. So, so this is the general panel and I could use this to set a minimum and maximum spawn time. So I'm going to say between 0.5 and one second spawn an asteroid and spawn a maximum of a hundred of one hundred. Um we'll just go for one at once. So the AI on this uh, by default it will fire and it will chase. So we don't need it to fire and instead of chase I'm going to set it to move minus Y so it'll just move down the screen. So now the game needs a player. So I'm going to pick a spaceship and go for that one. And this is basic but a playable game. You can move around the screen, dodge the asteroids. But we could improve it with a better camera position. So I'm going to put a camera in the game. And if I just move to the viewpoint I want, I can click Use Edit Camera View and this is going to be our in-game view now and I'm also going to uh, make these a bit more interesting I can add a particle trail to the ship so while it's alive I have a blue jet and you can say where you want it to come from which tag this has a thrust tag at the back for the engines and gun tags so we'll go for the thrust tag so if I move out again using the mouse wheel and go to the asteroid while well, that's alive. I'm going to add a smoke trail and when it's destroyed I'll pick an explosion for that. So if I try the game now the asteroid's coming from off screen but everything's got the trails. So to add a bit more to the game I'm going to add another row of asteroids now going to have some coming on sideways. Move that across a bit. And escape to stop placing. I've accidentally put one under there so I can just select that and hit delete to get rid of it. So the effects destroyed. I'll have the explosion again and alive. I'm going to add the smoke trail again and the AI will get rid of fire again and this time I want it to move minus X across the screen and for generating it you have a minimum spawn time between 0.5 and 1 second again and again go for a maximum of 100 So because these, if you look at the collision groups, are both in the NPC collision group, the asteroids aren't going to collide with each other. If you want to change any of this, you can go to level settings and collision groups. And as you can see, the player doesn't collide with player. If we change this to the NPC, 
it doesn't collide with MPC, it does collide with everything except MPC bullet. You can change these however you like to suit your game. So while I'm on the level settings, let's have a rotating background to make it a bit more interesting. Rotate clockwise. So if I click done and we try this out. Yeah, I've got the asteroids coming from both directions. So these asteroids down the side are coming uh, slightly too far over. I'm just going to use the move tool to move them all back a bit. So they're actually coming from off screen. I could also have moved the camera. Also move that stray one over there. So the ship isn't moving very fast. It'd be nice to have a faster ship. So if you look at this AI type, the player definition is default. So the player definitions are set here. So if I use the same default one but copy it and edit that, I'm going to call it default fast. So I'm going to leave lives and health and everything the same. I'll change the acceleration to 80. So I could also change, set it at constant velocity in collision actions and set the controls for it, but these are all right, just left the same. And then I'll change player definition to that new default fast one. So I'm also going to add a light, just brighten it up a bit. So if I put a light in over here, um, if I make it a directional light, I'll make it orange, give it all of it a colour. You can always click on here to pick a colour off the colour picker. And I'll rotate it a bit. You can use the rotate tools. So the last thing you can do is if I set a trigger, I can set a player active area. So if I put this down, make it a rectangle, uh, try about 400 by 300. You can always adjust this afterwards if it's not quite right. So what I can do with the player now is set an active area for the trigger I've just set up, which is trigger one, and area action stop. This just stops you player moving off screen when the player gets to the to the edge of the active area it just won't move any further. So now we've got a faster player and we've got a very simple but playable game. So other things we could do to make it a bit more interesting. Um, we could have the second row of asteroids set off on a timer. So if we put a timer in set it to three seconds and then set it to activate the second NPC generator then I can disable this so at the start of the game this won't be in play and in three seconds it'll be activated. Something else that we can add is some bonuses to collect so you could either do that using an NPC generator or just put them in as NPCs so I'll put some of these in and for AI we don't want it to fire. Um, we can have it just moving randomly, there's a move random option on the AI list. So we just want it to move on the XY plane and change direction between one and two seconds apart. So staying with that, with the effects when it's destroyed I'll go for a starburst effect and at the moment the default is an explosion sound. Um, There's a range of bonus sounds as well. Um, you can just press play to sound, see what they sound like. So I'll go for bonus one. Um, other things for, um, yeah, for collision. Um, 
the default is to do collision damage of 100 but within a bonus we don't want it to do any collision damage to the player so just set that to zero and then actions um, there's different things you, actions you can set up destroy self kill and to take a player game over and um, we can also set up upgrades and trigger pop-ups or activate um, other entities that may be activated a different bonus so for this one I'm going to set up a score upgrade so if we go to upgrades at the moment we don't have any upgrades so if I create new um, I'll call it score 100 if I can spell <laughs> I will learn to spell and we don't want it to reset when you lost life because we want the extra points to stay and type you've got all sorts add an extra life change player properties enable weapons so I'm just going to add to score add 100 so if I hit done there um, then set the upgrade score 100 done if we want a few more of these we can just copy and paste so it's an alternative to having an NPC generator you have a set number like that so now if we test the game we've got the random bonus to collect the asteroids to dodge and it's starting to look a bit more like a game so there's all sorts you could do from here um, maybe set up a time limit maybe have more things coming from different directions different sets of bonuses different upgrades to collect um, but just as a basic starting point just taking a few minutes and you've got a basic game going so thanks for listening